happy anniversary. It's been one year since you've seen me. Loganga lava sanikim vanavu milladam deva vaku pramanikim bhaktano nityamam Logangal avasanikim vanavu milladam deva vaku pramanikim bhaktano nityamam vatam malinyam nasham illa toravagasham vatam malinyam nasham illa toravagasham kelkuga nam kakuga ജീവന്റെ വാക്യങ്ങൾ കേൾക്കുക നാം കാക്കുക നാം ജീവന്റെ വാക്യങ്ങൾ അജ്ഞനെ ജ്ഞാനിയാക്കുവാൻ വചനം ജ്ഞാനമാം സത്യത്തിൽ അതു കാക്കുവാൻ സ്വർഗത്തിൽ ദാനമാം അജ്ഞനെ ജ്ഞാനിയാക്കുവാൻ വചനം ജ്ഞാനമാം സത്യത്തിൽ അത് കാക്കുവാൻ സ്വർഗത്തിൽ ദാനമാം ഒഴിയ നിത്യനാശം കാലിനൊരു പ്രകാശം ഒഴിയ നിത്യനാശം കേൾക്കുക നാം കാക്കുക നാം ജീവന്റെ കേൾക്കുക നാം All right, let's turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. I'm going to be reading a few more. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clear his threshing floor, gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And I'm going to read Revelation chapter 21, verse 5 through 8. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give springs of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this inheritance, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, and for murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with sulfur, which is the second death. And I'm going to go to Mark chapter 9, verse 42 to 50, but I'm not going to read all of it. In 48 and 40, 48 and 50. Their worm does not die, and fire is not quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Luke chapter 13, verse 27 and 28. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourself will be cast out. So I hope you got what I'm talking about today. For today's title will be Weeping and Gnashing of Teeth. Um, I know we live in a world that doesn't want to talk about hell. Um, we live in a society and a community of <laughs> believers that we want the name it, claim it. And everything has to be kumbaya. Um, Jesus, lover of my soul, I'll never let you go. But I'm going to talk about a Jesus that will let you go and will throw you into the lake of fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, hell is real, folks. Um, Jesus talked about hell more than anyone else. Um, and that phrase, weeping and gnashing of teeth, it has been repeated over and over and over again. It has been even seen in the Old Testament. And um, 
I just want people to wake up and realize that, you know, the, the dear baby Jesus scene <laughs> that we all think. Uh, there's a side to Jesus that will tell you, I do not know you. Um, get away from me. <laughs> Um, and he will throw you into that lake of fire because he's the one who made it. Um, if he made the heavens and the earth, and he made hell too, and that's his property. Um, so all, throughout the New Testament, um, everywhere you see Jesus always kind of ending with all of his parables and his things, and he always says, where I will throw you into the lake of fire or where there is gnashing of teeth or outer darkness. We see this over and over again. But somehow, us today, we just want to get the good stuff and throw away and that things that this doesn't exist. But it's very scary. Um, you know, we just want the good part, the good Jesus, the, my BFF. Um, but there is a part where he can there's a side to him that he will, and it's, he's a judge, right? So, um, and I was thinking like, you know, throughout, I was looking throughout the New Testament of how many times, you know, this is mentioned over and over again. And it's funny how we don't bring that up. I don't know why we keep skipping this part, uh, but hell is real and it's scary. And it's ref referred to as the outer darkness. Uh, it's pitch black. It's, there's, there's worms that do not die. <laughs> um, so I looked up a bunch of worms. Uh, I, I wanted to show some pictures, but there's this one called the bobbit worm. Look it up. It's a predatory worm that's 10 feet long, and it hides in burrows of, in, in, the, in the ocean bed, and it, and it grabs you down, and it's prey. And, and it likes living next to lava vents. It really, it likes boiling water. Um, and there's even worms that live inside lavas. So these are all warning signs, right? And you can't say, oh, that doesn't exist. And we also live in a, in, in a culture that people believe that, oh, there's no way that a loving God could just keep people in burning eternal fire forever. That's completely wrong against the word of God. And when Jesus says it's forever and ever, it's forever, ever. <laughs> it's, it's not temporary. There is no presidential pardon, guys. You can't go there and get out of jail card. It's not, you know, a 25 to life and then you get out for good behavior. It's forever and ever. Jesus, God says that I do not know you. Get away from me. And there's, you know, you could say, well, I was part of church. I was building church. Um, think about this. Noah had to hire people to build that ark, right? There's no way him and his three boys built that giant ship. So he hired people, and there were structural engineers, and there were carpenters. There's all kinds of guys who brought knowledge to that project. But not a single one got in. They worked on that project. Where, where's Noah's in-laws? Where are those girls' in, parents? Not a single one got in. You could be used to build, but that doesn't mean that you have to be in it at the end. You can be building the church. You can have your name on the bricks. You can have your name on the websites and the flyers, but that does not mean you're going to make it. This is serious. It is outer darkness. There's gnashing of teeth, and it's pitch black, and it's called a bottomless pit. So think about falling for eternity, where you can't see anyone because it's thick fog, and there's worms all over you. We're kids who get scared of one spider. Good luck having a bed of worms going through all over you. And you think you're going to get used to it? It's called eternal agony. And it's called eternal torment for a reason. You don't get used to it after a few hours. It's forever and ever, forever, ever. <laughs> you don't go night-night. It's going to be, you're going to be awake. And 
If anyone's been burned, you know that's the worst feeling ever. And you have to think about all this stuff too. It's not like you just get some new fresh mind. You're thinking about everything and you're constantly hearing people screaming because the guy next to you might, is also going through that. And you can't find comfort in each other. And you're always constantly thinking how wrong you were. So what privilege, how do you get there, right? So do you want to go there? Just be you. Because by default, you're going there. It takes effort not to go there. But by default, you're heading there already. Because all have fallen short, glory of God. All have fallen. We are all heading that way. It's when we have to try to get out to not go there. So you might be asking, how do I do that, Ben? Well, there's 52 other weeks. You could watch sermons on our channel. You can listen to other preachers. But I'm here to tell you about hell is real. And this is God's word that tells you how to get out of it. So uh, when this all started, which is a year ago, this thought came into my mind. Um, like what is happening, you know, what is this thing going on? And to me, it was like, uh, like you probably heard this already, so it probably sounds cliche. This is a warning. It's a wake-up call. And so I thought of it as an alarm clock, right? So God is giving an alarm to people to wake up eat for the church, for you as an individual, and for the whole planet to wake up. And to look up and see that there is a God. And if I don't wake up, I'm heading to this, what I just told you. Um, so let's say that you have to go somewhere. Um, Eight o'clock in the morning and you have to be there. And you need to wake up at six. You set the alarm. And then at six, the alarm does what it's supposed to do. It goes off. But you hit what? The snooze button. The snooze button gives you nine minutes. And then after nine minutes, it goes off again. And what do you do? You hit the snooze button. And you keep doing that and because you're under the cover and you want your comfort zone, right? So some of us kept hitting the snooze button. And even now, think of yourself that you, how some of us are happy that this happened because think about it, you don't have to wake up and come here, right? Some of you are probably in your couch right now in your PJs. And you're hitting the snooze button. But here's what happened. The alarm clock that you set because you needed to go somewhere, someone else in your house heard that clock and they were annoyed by it. But they got up and they got with the program. They don't need to get up at 8 and go somewhere. You're the one who needed to go. But they used that time to start their day early. They might gripe about it in the beginning, but now they're saying, I'm glad I got up. So church, people got up, and they woke up, but you might be still under the covers. I hope the team could come forward. So some of us need to wake up and stop hitting the snooze button and realize that where you're headed. This is real. This isn't all kumbaya, Jesus, okay? I don't know, uh, there's a lot of songs out there that I just, I don't even know what Bible they're reading. It's on Caleb and Air One and all those stuff. But everything is about Jesus, lover of my soul. But there's a Jesus that could tell you that I do not know you. And this is forever and ever. It's eternal darkness and it's eternal pain. And it's never, never, never ending. If eternal life is eternal and you could accept that, you need to also accept that eternal fire is eternal. And I hope I scared the hell out of you today. May God bless you.